Greetings, family. Uh, this is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Africa for Africans conference call. And today's date is November 12, 2023. And uh, we're getting ready for uh, another incredible season of uh, Africa tours. Uh, so I'm going to share all the details and the schedules and this go to uh, vital information. And it's a lot of details on our website at africaforafricans.org, uh, which shows uh, our 17 years of this traveling connecting to Africa and just uh, organizing uh, different uh, investments, uh, options, and opportunities. So definitely would like to just do a more screen sharing than anything else. And uh, once I go through certain parts of um, you know, segment or topics, uh, we can just open things up if anyone have a um, question. Or while I'm talking, if anyone have any questions, just uh, unmute yourself and uh, chime in. And then for those who join us later, they could just uh, catch up. All right, so let me start with our uh, screen sharing. All right, so it takes you right to our website, africaforafricans.org. And as I'm always uh, letting everyone know that all the information that they're looking to process before they travel or before they make a decision, uh, it's all on this website, africaforafricans.org. And uh, the breakdown is all on the main menu. And uh, what we have uh, when you first get to the website is this uh, presentation, uh, audio MP3 player with some nice music. You can always pause it or turn off your uh, volume. And then a uh, slide showed us random uh, photos from us all over Africa for the last 17 years. Uh, and then once you scroll down, that's when you see all the details, uh, website, uh, right there, you'll see on the main menu, the uh, main thing I'm always uh, promoting and pushing is our Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community, which is a future project. And as time go along, we'll figure out more, we'll get more done, we'll get more organized and put in place, but it's a foundation project, so we're four years in. Uh, so this gives you a great introduction, and then this uh, from there, you have access to a whole lot of videos and a whole lot of uh, photos. And just a lot of presentation in general that's covered the time so we can show people where we're built from. Uh, next thing uh, is the uh, tour books. Uh, the tour books I have the latest versions of the tour books up to where once you click on it, uh, it will give you just the full digital view of the book. And also you can download the, uh, uh, the PDF version of the book. And I'm going to go back and open up one of the books, uh, which will be our Tanzania journey since that's our next journey and then go through it along with the itinerary. And then uh, just show the list of other books uh, there, just sh you know, showing the history of some of the books. Uh, we have a lot of books, so I don't have all of the books up there. Just try to primarily show the last um, you know, five, seven, five to seven years and showing some of the books uh, per year. And now once we scroll down to the middle, um, this is a link for all of your, the journeys that you're interested in. Uh, right there in the main menu and right there on the front page, just click on the link, open it up and um, go to the details. So once I scroll back up, I'll be clicking on the Tanzania link and then um, looking to go to the day-to-day -day itinerary as an example of all the organized day-to-day -day itineraries that we have for all of the tours and just give you just a nice flow of this, uh, how we approach things. And once we set these um, itineraries, our goal is just to follow it. So the goal is for everyone that's looking to journey with us to be clear on that itinerary. And only thing I would say that uh, may change is hotels may change and be adjusted. But the flow of the schedule, all the things that we have that we're going to do on that itinerary, uh, that's uh, usually just uh, consistent. And then we just might add uh, one or two things or change one or two things, but it's uh, minimal. And the hotel adjustment will always be to uh, provide you a better accommodations and also this strategically where we're moving around is put you in a situation where we can just move around with ease. So, so outside of that, uh, what you see as far as the schedule is what we're going to be doing. Uh, so the next uh, journey at Tanzania Roots and Culture, November 16th to the 27th. Uh, so um, I'll wait to, you know, to uh, show the details to go through more of that. But the next journey after that is our South Africa uh, journey, which is an uh, incredible nine days in South Africa. That's December 24th to January 4th. Uh, so that is set to where we're literally uh, doing five days in uh, Johannesburg and four days in Cape Town. Uh, so the sequence of uh, the uh, South Africa journey is 
uh, all flights get connected to Atlanta and then we all leave from Atlanta directly on Delta Airlines to Johannesburg. And then while we're there, we have three tour days uh, that we make our way around uh, South Africa from one uh, national park where you see animals, where you can see the nature reserve uh, for a few hours. Uh, so a, a daytime journey. Uh, other one is uh, a full city tour. And then the next one is a uh, cultural village and historical places. Uh, so, and then we have one day where it's just an open day where you just relax, final shopping. And then we get ready for us, our South African Airways flight uh, from Johannesburg uh, to Cape Town. And then we're in Cape Town for four days. And so while we're in Cape Town for the four days, uh, we have uh, two, uh, two tour days. So it's a lot of history, museum, uh, going to different settlements, uh, making our way on a boat over to Robin Island, going up to uh, Table Mountain. So it's a nice, incredible itinerary. You know, we're going to be close to the waterfront. So that has a lot of great dining and great activities. And on the way back, uh, instead of flying back to uh, Johannesburg, which we had to do the last time, uh, Delta has a flight now where it leaves from uh, Cape Town directly uh, to Atlanta. So that's uh, perfect. So that'll give us a little more time in Cape Town on the final day where we, you know, where we just have more time to just relax and get ourselves organized. Uh, so that's another incredible schedule. And for those who are traveling with us to uh, South Africa, um, as soon as December hits, uh, looking to do private um, conference calls and also looking to use the next conference call to go through all of the final uh, details for that journey. Uh, so as time come along, this, uh, trying to get more this, uh, private calls out and this general calls to go over information. But uh, that is our, our South Africa journey, which will be our second uh, journey to South Africa. The last one was November 2019. And then since the COVID-19 era, a lot of things have been thrown off. Uh, but this will be my fourth time to South Africa. Uh, first time was uh, in 2005, uh, May and uh, November. Uh, so that is uh, the experience that we are we're building on. So it's a um, more modern, more advanced country, um, may not have the same level of culture as Ghana and things like that, but uh, all of these uh, countries offer an array of different uh, experience. And South Africa is just always a great country to visit. It's right there in the, the bottom of uh, the southern part of Africa and with an incredible infrastructure in this um, a whole lot of controversy over the years about many different things, uh, but it's a very well organized uh, run country and it's um, you know one of the jewels in Africa. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know it also offers opportunities for those who want to actually just live there. I mean, there's these incredible communities that when we're driving around in Johannesburg and in, in incredible communities and you know you may think it's you know but it's majority of this black people living there from different countries in uh, different parts of South Africa. Uh, so those are some of the things that's one of get ourselves more into checking out uh, the future of opportunities because it may not be for some of us, but you know, it may open other people's eyes to want to live and do business there in South Africa. And it's the same as all other countries that we have on that itinerary. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's to open our eyes and something may not be for you now, but you know, a lot, lot can change over the next five to 10 years. And you know, as Africa will change and, you know, and grow as it has been doing for the last uh, 20 years. And, so the beginning of the year, uh, we're gonna set off our next journey to Liberia. That's our reconnection and investment uh, journey. So this is our first journey to Liberia. So appreciate all the people who have joined in to make this an incredible journey. My good brother, Kala Genesis, have provided his people, his connections, his network, and just his energy as far as this pushing Liberia, as far as a country that has historical connections for those of us in the African diaspora. And it's um, another great opportunity you know, as countries come out of their situations uh, 10, 20, 30 years later, uh, you know, we're just looking to make that, make that grow, uh, growth uh, connection. Uh, so looking forward to it, uh, looking forward to going to all the historical places, recording it, uh, enjoy the great dining, uh, meet incredible people, and also stay in that incredible beach resort that we have right there in Liberia. Um, and that was when uh, Bob Johnson, uh, you know, Mr. BT himself, uh, investment in Liberia. And that was you know, well over 10 years ago, uh, but it's one of those things where, you know, you have visionaries come into different countries and uh, do certain things, but that opens up to where, you know, we have a nice resort where we can just kick back, do a lot of uh, the different uh, things that we have on the schedule from pool parties to uh, business conference to social gathering, networking, to just relaxing, uh, leisure, and things like that. Uh, so looking uh, forward to that journey, and that's the journey that uh, we're going to work on a nice, uh, fresh book and things like that, and then same thing for um, Egypt, which I'll be talking about. 
Uh, those are the only two countries that don't have those tour books that I'll be talking about. Uh, and then Ghana, that journey of a lifetime, this will be the 24th journey of a lifetime. And just looking to just make our way around a nice historical and cultural journey around um, Ghana for 10 days, four days in Accra, three days in Cape Coast, Elmina, and three days in Kumasi. And for those who like to stay longer and want to explore more in Ghana and want to connect more with the people that you meet and explore more, uh, it's, um, we're always open to this, uh, helping you adjust your dates and working with the airlines so you can stay longer. So that's been a good way to just explore uh, more of Ghana. It's, uh, it's the, the more popular country that's um, set for repatriation and investment. So looking to do another incredible business and investment conference and just make it uh, greater than the last one we did. And the goal is just always step it up. Uh, the main lodging that we have there is going to be at uh, MJ Grand, which is a nice business hotel and on a nice, well-developed uh, block to where when you're traveling there to Ghana, you know, once you leave the airport and the, Everything is as well developed and just, you know, you get a chance and get a feel to see just the beauty of, uh, you know, of an incredible African country because not all the countries are, same, are the same. Some countries you go, the airports are falling apart and the infrastructure are bad from the airport to wherever you're going. Uh, so this is just uh, impressive um, and uh, it's not always the same in all the countries you go to. Uh, so, uh, and then one of the main thing is uh, why you're in that neighborhood is a walking neighborhood. It's a neighborhood with, um, you know, you'll see how, you know, you know, people in Africa live as far as success, doing well for themselves as far as whether it's their mansion or their nice homes and nice business area and things like that. And then a lot of social energy in that area as far as the main mall in Accra that's right there and also the mall in the neighborhood, Isogon. So that's going to be a great experience. And then we're off to uh, Cape Coast, Elmina. So a lot of um, historical energy there as far as the African Holocaust dungeons, um, the last bath. Uh, us going on a canopy walk, which is always a great uh, adventure. The, uh, drumming and dancing at One Africa, uh, different lodging op options for those who want to stay, whether they want to stay in a resort or stay somewhere a little more modern day uh, as far as updated, as far as certain convenience or they want just a natural feel. Uh, so all part of the experience and uh, Kumasi itself is this, you know, this incredible garden city uh, with just a whole lot to do as far as uh, history and culture. Yeah, so always looking forward to it, and it's the country that we have just the most documentation, and it's been this, it's been a great experience. And the uh, only thing that can get any better is uh, once we get more things done with building the, our community and building that town, so we can just have a future place for our headquarters and to run more business operations uh, there. So always looking to just connect with people on visions, ideas, and um, investments and things like that. So that's uh, what we have. So that takes us to the closeout of the year. And uh, so we're ready for our Egypt Nile Valley civilization journey. It, that would be 20 years since I've been to Egypt. Uh, so I connected with a good sister, Matrella, on a mission. She had traveled with us in the past. Uh, so Egypt uh, a journey is a journey where she moved to Egypt. She lived there. She's working there. She have done tours there. And we've just been building something um, well organized for us. So this itinerary uh, takes you on Nile Valley cruise take you along the now a whole a uh, few different uh, flights to where you don't have to do a lot of driving uh, so that was the great uh, flow so when you look at the nine days that you're there in Egypt you're doing a whole lot because you're you're not depending you're not doing any five-hour drives and things like that or any kind of movements like that you're getting on a flight and it's 30 minutes to an hour you're at your destination uh, so uh, great itinerary great flow uh, that, that I feel like people will enjoy and it's not a whole lot of lectures the lectures are going to be based on just you being at the tour sites uh, you know sometimes people think you know you do these Egypt tours it's all about lectures and a whole bunch of talk but we also want to make sure you have fun and excitement and adventure so we have a nice water park uh, a resort uh, that has a water park uh, in our Gata by the Red Sea so you know you'll be at a, a complete different location that, than you know some of the other uh, itineraries that you have seen in the past that only focus on the Nile Valley. So we was able to just add those two extra days in and make it work. So definitely uh, looking forward to that uh, journey. And then when we, then December, we're going to close out another South Africa journey. So if the interest is there, you know, we'll you know, make it work in South Africa. And then the beginning of 2025, Senegal and Gambia again. Uh, so I've had to space that journey out because of the lack of interest. So hoping more people show interest in that. Other than that, you know, the goal is to rotate these uh, seven countries that we have and 
in the future, see what we can add on. But uh, we've covered the different parts and different regions of uh, Africa with some of the best countries uh, that's you know, doable, uh, that we have good connections and relationships with, because that's a uh, matters. I need to have people on the ground in every single country that we're dealing with, which I do to make it work. And that's the part that works good is those relationships. So you know, other countries that you don't have those relationships uh, can't just jump in and do those journeys. The last country I have a good relationship with was, was with Rwanda, but had no uh, level of interest. So any other countries, countries that we can work on in the future, as long as people have interest, we'll keep flowing and doing what we're doing. Uh, so once you scroll down, uh, it's a whole lot of links, updates on um, upcoming conference calls. So the next one will be December 10th. And uh, that's the link right there, the details there. And also you have all of the, the social pages, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, uh, videos, pictures, profiles, presentations, details. And then a whole lot of Facebook groups where we just post all kind of information uh, to where just, you know, get your uh, information out because uh, we have so many other people that, you know, once you start doing this kind of business, their goal is just to copy you. So you just have to keep it, uh, you know, you have to keep a, a pace ahead of them. Uh, and coming down, all of our beautiful tour photos uh, for the last uh, 17 years, and this amount to over 30 different uh, journeys uh, from Brazil to eight different uh, African countries out of the uh, 10 countries I've traveled to in Africa. Uh, so once we do Egypt, that will be another country that I've traveled to in the past. And, you know, we've done a journey. And then the only country outside of that, that, you know, we didn't do a tour tour was uh, Kenya. And Kenya is, you know, most some people, I love Kenya. Kenya is incredible. Uh, but you don't always have the option to choose all these countries. And you have to find something that works. And Tanzania is a good, you know, you know, it's, a, it's been a good uh, journey and great experience, especially when you have Zanzibar Island in the middle and, you know, Arusha at the beginning and Dar es Salaam, you're closing out uh, and you can move around different airports and everything. It's, you know, it's a logistic dream when you're trying to plan something out. Uh, so the greatest thing, you know, about our Tanzania journey is you don't have to do a bunch of long, long rides, uh, very short uh, to the point, uh, but all the journeys are different. Uh, and All of them are based on different experience. So scrolling down, I just want to show a few more of um, these photos. And these are mainly our groups in the Africa for Africans shirts. And that's the solidarity, the energy. And all, all the t-shirts are inspired by Marcus Garvey. And you know whether we put Marcus Garvey name on there or we put any other person name on there, uh, they're showing love to our ancestors who built a movement, built an energy and a vision. And this um, recommended, um, educated us, uh, shared information, laid things out, built a foundation that said, hey, uh, let's uh, build a connection, let's build a relationship with Africa, let's uh, build a future, let's figure it out, uh, let's go through what we have to go through and you know, get it done. Uh, so our energy along with a lot of other people's energy is that energy. Uh, so, and, and the colors is just the colors and the energy of the continent. And so next thing I want to do is I want to scroll up and uh, click on the, the tour book. So to the left, you see uh, Africa tour books, Journey for Lifetime. And this is if you're on your desktop or laptop. If you're on your phone, uh, you may not see the left part of this um, uh, website. But what you see is you see the same information on the main menu. Because all these things are just put together to where you can see them on your phone. But um, you know, you're limited on the phone at times. And in this case, of the site. Um, from the slideshow to the mp3 player it's only desktop and the laptop uh, version that can operate that way uh, so that's the site that we're working with until we figure something else out but um, definitely want people to see the craft of the work that we put together by this unit on your desktop and then you can just you know cast it over to your big tv if you want to see it in uh, more vibrant and bigger colors so this is the uh, tour book so once you click on the link, it takes you to a list of different uh, books. So these are the, some of the books and uh, they represent all the countries that we have uh, been traveling to in the last uh, several years. So that's our Tanzania, Ghana tour book, uh, Senegal and Gambia. And that represents uh, three of our last journeys and uh, three, and we have printed the books for all of these journeys. So trying to stay ahead to where we can just get books printed because I realize it's a different experience once you have a printed book. But I'll always uh, create the uh, digital version because 
but people who want a copy of the book, you know, we, we can't print that much uh, copies of the book. We just limited the printing some. So for those who want a book, you'd have to travel with us or you can just use the digital version. But uh, it's not a situation where we have stacks of books available here. Uh, I do have extra books for promos uh, only and to work with different uh, promoters and people that you know you're dealing with uh, that you're trying to uh, present to so they can share it with their, their family members and share it with their network. And as you can see, this uh, these are our colors, red, black, green, and gold, the vibrant colors. And it takes you all the way to, and this is our last South Africa tour book. Uh, so I'm going to be modifying that um, the beginning of uh, next month. Take me about a few days to uh, get it worked and just going to figure out something nice and impressive on there. Use some of the photos that we have taken in the uh, last journey. Ghana, Togo, Benin. So a bunch of tour books. The first one we printed was um, in 2007, uh, but it doesn't make sense to take up uh, bandwidth and all those things to put those books up here. So I just uh, put a um, bunch of ones that represent um, at least the five countries that uh, we have on the schedule that we have done journeys uh, to over. And then once you know, Liberia comes up and Egypt comes up, I'll print fresh books and upload and share them. I, so I'm hoping that everyone can actually see this uh, flip book. And I'm going to go through it because what I really want to do is um, you know, most of the things that's going to talk about is things that's going to be on itinerary. But I want to read to the day to day flow of that itinerary just to go to at least one itinerary and just show the flow of our organized schedule and how we just make this whole journey work based on the schedule. And Right, so um, our introduction with our copyright, um, web design information, book design information uh, from Bomani Technology. So that's why I do all my productions and you know, technical and business uh, services. A table of contents, um, that's right on point with all the flow of everything you're doing. Not sure why this page uh, looks this way, but uh, that's the uh, mission and vision statement. At our general press release, and then the last uh, two photos of our uh, previous uh, Tanzania journey. And uh, this is my direct dedication to our ancestors. Um, we have a list of different um, ancestors to the left. Um, you know, great scholars that have you know contributed energy, and you know we can list probably about a hundred more and things like that. But uh, some of these are. Uh, ancestors just represent, uh, you know, your, you know, your, when you're studying, you're learning certain things. Uh, and, you know, some of them become comes core teachers of, uh, you know, what you're learning uh, based on this, the work they've done before and based on their research. Uh, so that's uh, just uh, that dedication list. And then the main person and vision that uh, we you know we're connecting with is three page on Marcus Garvey, and that's because unfortunately. Sometimes uh, people don't know enough about these things. So letting people know that the reason why we're in this business and we're looking to make a move to Africa is because of the inspiration, the vision, the philosophies, the opinions um, of you know, people like Marcus Garvey and other ancestors who craft a path for us to build a future in Africa. You know? And unfortunately, you know, it's not something that's gonna come with everything that you have to do, like a manual and things like that. You know, you have to read and figure things out and we have to figure things out because um, the situation that we're in is a situation where it just takes, you know, those different approaches. So I appreciate everyone that have done everything for us to build an energy to where we're even interested in Africa because you know, based on the history that um, as the people learn, none of us, you know, none of us, all of us could be like, you know, Africa, um, now, well, it's unfortunate, you know, that, you know, what happened, history, but um, I'm fine with being in America. I'm fine with this life. I'm, you know, uh, all the best to them and things like that. But uh, in the energy of Pan-Africanism, uh, it's uh, for us to connect a global effort to fix some of our own problems of people and be competitive. So I appreciate uh, that energy from Marcus Garvey, Kwame Nkrumah, and the foundation of that vision. And, um this page right here is this uh, introduction about Tanzania. Um, it's um, a country that more of us know more about ever since COVID-19 because it was one of the few countries that was open and 
uh, during the time of the last few years we've been traveling, that was one of the few countries that was the slavery open and available with lack of issues and frustration to where, you know, the requirements are just too much for you to just travel there. So been able to do three straight journeys to Tanzania. This is the fourth journey, and that's from November 2020 to now November 2023, and that's annually doing those journeys. And unfortunately, uh, we don't have a schedule for Tanzania next year, but um, we're going to work it in for November 2025. Uh, special reminders always got you know a list of those things that we just remind everyone just to get focused on and things that things that I also put in the uh, departure reminder list. And then all the contacts. So if you're traveling with us and you need a contact, of so all the hotels, all the people that we're dealing with, their email address, um, and so on, uh, whether it's for your friends or family, you can just share this copy of the book with them and share the information. It, they have all those uh, contact details and then you know, the full schedule. Uh, my bio, brief information about uh, myself and the things that uh, you know, we built from the foundation as far as um, how we got here. And it's one of my newest page. I was just trying to just, you know, get my son to smile in this t-shirt. Uh, and I guess he said he did the best he could do is to smile. Uh, but that's the colors of all the t-shirts that we have in Tanzania. That's the white one down at the bottom. That's the green, the blue. And then last year, uh, the black version. And then this uh, photo at the top right here is a photo of us uh, there at the uh, Arusha National Park, which I feel like everyone is going to love. Uh, the good thing about it is you're enclosed in your vehicle and uh, you don't have one of those situations where someone is in an open vehicle and they decide they want to get a close-up close photo of something. It won't be any of those things. You know, you won't, we won't even give you a chance to put yourself in danger and harm. Uh, but I don't know ever what's out there, but all I know is we're in a safe vehicle and uh, you know, usually animals uh, don't come charging at you. But yeah, so it's not one of those things where you just go into an open safari and you just ride up and close and you think that's cool, you know. And then if uh, some, you know, if a uh, you know animal just jump in your you know, your vehicle and things. I've seen some wild stuff and um the guys there um uh, they do professional safaris and I'm always telling them that if anyone wants to do it, you know, we can help arrange it. And I know uh, know that they they do these things on a regular basis so you can go and ex enjoy that experience. But I have not been out anywhere where I'm out in those places uh, and I'm sure I'll get a chance to do it. Uh, but you know, for the, you know, to keep it, it simple to where we're not out at a park for three, four days and things like that, we just have a general national park. So that's Arusha. And then when you come and travel with us to South Africa, you know, we have, uh, you know, Palanisburg, which is a nice you know, two hours and, you know, you have a three hour ride around the park and you, you'll be able to see certain things, which is not, you're not seeing the Serengeti. So definitely want to let everyone know. But uh, it's, uh, it's a great introduction. And I think it will open more people to, to do the safaris, which um, once we figure things out, um, you know, I've been working with these guys for the last three years and I've told them that that's what we're working towards. And uh, it's something that they do on a regular basis, but I've just never really got that much energy from anyone saying that that's really what they want to do, go to a country and go out for three, four days. It's been people who have made arrangements uh, with, with uh, travel at the beginning of, uh, on these safaris or you know do it towards the end uh, but never like a whole group of people that say that this is what they want to do uh, so I was telling them that I can't just change the schedule to where we just do Zanzibar and then we're out there in the Serengeti that would be nice uh, but you miss out on Arusha and also Dar es Salaam also in uh, Tanzania uh, the language is uh, Kiswahili uh, so this is a language translation that I put together the first time we did a book I don't know I was just very excited about going to Tanzania and I just, I don't know, I just, I sat down one day and I crafted this book uh, for I think it was too many, two or three days from scratch. And it's been easier now since everything is this, you're changing only maybe seven to 10, 15 pages, maybe and you're updating a few pages. So it's, um, it's said to, you know, we'll just go from there, but these are some of the, um, the words that we, you know, our tour guide will use that you will hear uh, in Tanzania. It, it's a tricky one. It's uh it's an English speaking country as far as just the colonial rule and as far as the courts and things like that. But at the same time too, when you go to the ATM machine, they literally have uh, Kiswahili as the language along with English and maybe one or two other languages for you to get your money and things like that. So it's, it's the energy of East Africa where they're pushing more of Kiswahili. So, you know, uh, looking to this, always just trying to provide a guide to where we can just flip from and learn more about 
the language if you choose to. I don't want to push anything on anyone, but uh, that's one of the things that's intense there. But the good thing about it, you know, when you live in a tourist life, you can just speak the language that you speak uh, because the guides that you're paying for, uh, they have to be certified to speak the same language that you speak. Uh, that way you can be clearly, you can clearly understand them and you can have a dialogue and you, you can ask them questions and they can conversate with you. Uh, do's and don'ts. Uh, so this is a full uh, tour overview, a list of this, all the things that we're doing um, in Arusha, Zanzibar, Dar es Salaam. So uh, that is uh, updated and just made sure everything looks, flow good, looks good. The links to all the hotels are there. Uh, the full day-to-day -day itinerary, which I'll be going through. Uh, once I open things up for questions and then we just go through that itinerary. And so I did my best to, you know, when you're trying to do these things, you're trying to type, organize things. This, but after a while, you get tired of looking at the book and looking at things and scrambling for mistakes. So do I always apologize to everyone if they see any typos or anything. Do our best to I even have, sometimes I have someone even look over the books and they may not find it. And then I go back over and I find several mistakes. Uh, but these books are cleanly organized as far as just the flow of this to look as professional that people know that, you know, we're about that business of being organized. Uh, so yeah, these are the three hotels. Let's give you a, a little dialogue about the hotels and this uh, picture of the hotel and also a photo of one of the rooms. So this comes up on a part where we talk about an antenna and the itinerary, and these are all of the uh, different sites that you, you're going to be seeing around Arusha. And hopefully everybody can actually see this uh, tour book, but since it's uh, small, I just flip too fast. And then an introduction about Zanzibar and this historical cultural places that we we'll visit in Zanzibar, uh, water sports, and this and show them two page of paradise. Uh, get your massage, get your nice tropical drink, uh, go out there sailing. And then we have a group activity, which is the uh, sunset cruise, but you can do any individual activities and just enjoy yourself, jet skis, all those things. Uh, you, you see someone down there that's literally down in the bottom of the water. So um, I don't get down like that as far as snorkeling. I, I may do a little snorkeling, but uh, just being on the water like that is just, you know, I don't know if, who's really open to those things. But nevertheless, enjoy your venture. Uh, Dar es Salaam, very busy uh, city, but I got us in a nice location where we can move around to the Village Museum and the National Museum. And then enjoy some good dining. And then to close out the book, let's uh, talk about our Black Star Pan-African community, about mining technology and our Africa tour schedule. And that's the back of the book and that's our Precision Air. Yes, our uh, family, greetings everyone. So that was a quick um, this, uh, overview and just sharing one of the tour books, uh, which uh, I have for every uh, journey. And the next thing I'll do uh, once I just answer some questions is to go to the full day-to-day -day itinerary so everyone can see the flow of uh, the itinerary which all of them are the same this well organized and cover the flow of how we move around so yes uh, if anyone have any questions just unmute yourself uh, introduce yourself and let us know what journey you're uh, traveling on and your question And if no one have any questions, what I'm looking to do is reload the site and this, uh, go to our Tanzania tour page. All right, and if anyone have any questions, just, uh, just stop me um, and you know, can stop what I'm doing and we can just Answer any questions, uh, but for now, let me just go to uh, this itinerary. So as with all of the countries uh, we're traveling to, uh, these are the list of uh, the active files, general terms, uh, overview, itinerary, visa, uh, language translations on some of them, improving your immune system, and departure and reminder list, uh, which we have went to. Um, uh, usually that's the more popular one we have have gone through just to get everybody prepared and ready so all of these files are up 
uh, available for anyone that's have any interest. They don't have to call me or reach out to me. You can just look at information. If you're clear, you're ready to talk, you can reach out and connect. Uh, but uh, that's what we do. We just try to make sure that we have vibrant information uh, so people are clear and have calls and we can just dialogue, talk, or we can just hear a presentation. But definitely want more people just to be clear on the, the schedule. The itinerary is one of those things where, unfortunately, we have, you know, I don't, I can't say the percentage, but uh, we have enough people that travel with us that are not clear on the itinerary and things like that. So it's the most important thing to be clear on and understand that you don't have to get up with us every day, but in order for us to make all these journeys work, you know, we have to make it early. Now, if you want to stay up all night long and party and hang out, that's on you. I would say this, get you some rest in the morning and uh, try back again. But uh, the bus has to leave at a specific time. We can be, be flexible and everything a little bit, uh, but in order for us to get back in the evening, we just need to focus on leaving out early on time. So the flow of the schedule, uh, start with day one. So day one is just usually uh, all your flights are arranged from wherever you are uh, with the exception of the uh, Egypt journey. Everyone have to make their way to, um, to JFK. But in this situation, wherever you are, that you, you know, we agreed that you needed a flight. The flight was set up to where all flights uh, go to Amsterdam. So our flight will leave from Atlanta directly to Amsterdam. And then from Amsterdam, we get there the next day, uh, day two, Friday, November 17th and arrive at 7.55. So as soon as we arrive, the gate is close by. And uh, once we get to our gate, uh, we just all organize ourselves, uh, meet and greet, uh, introduce ourselves. I'll have the, um, if I don't, I'll have at least a tour book uh, printed for everyone. If I can't bring the bags and the t-shirts, I'll just leave them in a check bag. And then once we get to um, you know, Arusha, uh, give everybody their, yeah, their bag with their tour t-shirt, uh, bags, uh, pens, and a few flyers uh, to, you know, to share. Uh, so that's just our promo uh, things that we give out. Uh, the bags are great utilities where you're moving around the country. You could just, you know, instead of bringing a big bag, you just put your few th basic things in there, your umbrella, your waterproof poncho, a few basic accessories and things. Uh, and then, you know, you could just move around. So while we're there in uh, Amsterdam, um, you know, if you need something to eat, get what you need. And it's uh, the flight. Uh, these are two basically nine hour flights. Once you leave the US to Amsterdam, that's on average about nine hours. And so once you get ready to leave from Amsterdam back to, you know, back to Kilimanjaro or to Kilimanjaro, you're looking at a nine hour flight also. So if you're not feeling what they serve on the plane and things like that, um, I would just recommend you just uh, get something and bring it on the flight. And so once uh, we uh, depart, uh, we're looking to arrive in uh, Tanzania. It's been the same over the years, uh, 8.40 p.m. on the uh, KLM flight, uh, the big blue jet. Uh, so once we get there, uh, we'll go to our passport control. So at this point, everyone needs to have their visa printed. Uh, that's what I recommend. And if you don't have a visa, all the things that I've sent for your visa, just print them out, have them ready, and then you just, you'll be processed through a, a visa on arrival. Uh, along with passport control at the same time. So you get out at about the same time. So it's a good thing about uh, Tanzania. Uh, but I always recommend everyone do the visa because the visa is simple. It's, um, it's a digital visa. It takes, um, I would say, no more than 30 minutes to an hour. And people may say that, you know, I, and I type fast and things like that. So I can get it done 30 minutes, but it shouldn't take you no more than about an hour, especially since we have all the information sent to you via email where you're copying and pasting. And then once you finish the visa, it only takes anywhere. Uh, the quickest visa I've gotten, my visa takes one hour. It's a digital visa. And the longest that I've taken is five days. Uh, so once you do uh, you know, visas in the past and you put your previous visa information, then they can process you more closer to the one hour. Other than that, you're looking at about uh, three to five days to get a Tanzania visa. And everything is digital. So all you're doing is scanning your passport page, your passport photo, and also you're uploading a PDF copy of your flight itinerary. Uh, beyond that, all the information I give you, just put word for word as far as the people that are inviting us um, and all the information that's needed. And so once we uh, get uh, once we uh, get out of our passport uh, control and get our bags, our tour guide will be waiting for us. And once we um, step out of baggage claim, if you want to get some local uh, money, uh, I recommend getting some. And then tomorrow, the next day, you know, we'll take it to a Forks Bureau. It's 
so you can uh, you know, convert your US dollars. So I always recommend you bring 50s and $100 bills in all the countries that you travel to because uh, there's a system to where if you bring less than that, you get a lower value for your, you know, your money. Uh, so that's why we uh, recommend that directly. Uh, so once we um, you know, get ourselves organized, you're looking at a one hour drive uh, from uh, Kilimanjaro Airport directly to uh, the city of Arusha. And so we're la lodging on a resort at Planet Lodge. And it's a nice resort that we just have to where you can just enjoy your peace of mind and just be around beauty and nature. And that's the beautiful thing about Arusha. Arusha. It's just a beautiful, uh, you know, beautiful place, uh, very green and just full of energy. All right, uh, day three, we're going to get right into it. That's Saturday. Uh, so we have a list of a few different things. Uh, so we have the Maasai markets for those who want to do a whole lot of uh, craft shopping. That's the ideal place. Then we have two back-to-back -back museums. That's the Arusha Declaration Museum that's uh, dedicated to independence and the history of independence. And then you have the Natural Museum that's dedicated to this, the natural life in Arusha and uh, showcasing some of the things that you would see uh, when you go to some of the national parks. Uh, so both are museums, very impressive, very uh, incredible. And um, every time we, uh, you know, we're in Arusha, that's you know, one of the things we, just, we have on a schedule because the goal is always to make sure that when we have museums and places that you have to pay entrance fee and you have to actually you know, get a good presentation. You know, you want to support that energy because it's hard for us to go to a country that don't have people that you know, want me to come to certain countries. I was like, I need to put certain things that's educational, cultural, historical on the itinerary. And if you don't have museums, you have certain things, then you know, I can't write a proper itinerary. Uh, so uh, that's the uh, flow of uh, that day. And that's um, this uh, beautiful energy because everything that you, everything is this real close in Arusha. So, you drive from one location to the next, and you're there in a few minutes. Uh, very small, uh, very small town, but it has this more of what we would put on our itinerary than uh, other parts of Tanzania. Uh, so we're going to enjoy a nice uh, lunch uh, break after that, and then uh, we're going to head to uh, the United African Alliance Community Center ran by Pete and Charlotte uh, O'Neill, and they're uh, former Black Panther act activists that... Um, you know, made their move to uh, Tanzania to you know, escape certain things that uh, they, they were dealing with. So the good thing about it, um, you know, when I go through these itinerary, I don't ever try to just present a whole lot of information. Uh, wait till we get to the site and then you can just have your great presentation and then you can record it and just uh, enjoy a presentation and hear you know, people explain these things uh, directly. My goal is just to uh, go over it. So definitely looking forward to uh, going to that community center. And for those who have school supplies and things like that, that's ideal to bring it uh, on that day uh, where we're gonna get rid of all the uh, school supplies and any donations that you have, uh, you can uh, give it to the center. And so once we finish, uh, we're gonna enjoy a nice dinner, uh, whether at the uh, hotel or the uh, resort. And if some people are just drained and you just have to uh, enjoy your dinner at the resort, absolutely fine. And for those who are okay, we're going out to some of the list of restaurants that we have uh, while we're in Arusha, you know, we can make that work. So that's been a split uh, the last few years. Um, a few times we go out and a few times we stay and eat at the uh, hotel. And just all based on scheduling and how things are flowing and all based on how individuals feel. We want to make sure that we accommodate everyone for what works best for them. Um, unfortunately, you're up early in the morning after a long flight and you're moving around. And some people energy, you get drained faster than others and things like that. So uh, we definitely always keep those things in mind. And so if you have any issues or if you just don't feel like certain things, just you know, come and have a conversation and we just work it out for you. That's our only goal. You paid for your journey. And the only thing that uh, I want to do is work out things for everyone to where you enjoy your investment, enjoy your time, enjoy your getaway, and just uh, you be accommodated at the best as possible. Uh, the only thing I was telling everyone is uh, bear with us and work with us because unfortunately, we don't own any of these places. We have to work with the owners and the people who are in the places. Uh, so we always want to make sure that, you know, we work for you to make sure that they understand that, um, you know. So that's been the good thing about it. When you deal with um, the same itinerary over and over, you get to build those relationships. So everybody kind of gets you and they even do special things for you. So always appreciate the people of Tanzania uh, making our journey comfortable to where we just feel great to just come back over and over. And as I talk, as I talk uh, day four Sunday, uh, the key thing on this day is uh, it's Sunday and there's no restaurants in the national park. There's no restaurants anywhere. So the best thing I could recommend, and it's up to the individual, is Saturday. Um, and I'll make the uh, organized 
energy by talking to the kitchen and let them know we're going to the national park and people are open to getting box lunches. So it's a situation you put your specific order in, tell them exactly what you want uh, the night before, uh, even earlier in the daytime, the daytime, which would be better. And they can have it organized and arranged for you and give you a price. And then that's your uh, lunch. And trust me, this is the best thing I've worked out because I've tried other things. I've tried to work it out to where the tour guide do that package and provide certain things. And, you know, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want, you know, I don't want no problems from anyone, especially when it comes to people and their food and things like that. So, you know, um, you can't like package certain food and then take it to a national park. You have to think about many different things. So the best thing I usually recommend is, uh, you know, certain sandwiches and have them organize certain things. So I usually give uh, the actual kitchen uh, the heads up on how to do certain things. That way it could be ready for you and you can just have something nice. Like example, you may not exactly want uh, you know, a, a piece of uh, grilled chicken because by the time you bring it there, it gets cold and who likes eating cold chicken? Uh, for those who eat chicken and things like that, or even um, like myself, I would like to have a nice grilled red snapper uh, with me and things, but by the time it gets there, I have no way to heat it and things like that. So that's why I recommend sandwiches, fruits, uh, certain basic things. And if you have snacks and things like that, it's perfect for, to bring it on that day. And then while we're at the park, you're looking at three hours around the park. So it takes about an hour to get there. Um, so uh, by the time we drive around for about an hour and a half, uh, two hours, then we break for lunch and we have a nice uh, you know, park area where you could just break for lunch and you know enjoy your lunch and kick back, relax. And then we just continue the tour and finish up. So you'll see an array of different uh, animals I have on here, a um, bunch of different mon monkeys, uh, flamingos, but also you'll see just buffaloes, uh, giraffes, zebras, hippos, water bucks, bush buck, water, water hogs, and you may see a few more animals um, in the park. And like I mentioned, if you want a true safari, we have to take it to Serengeti or take it to one of the other parks and things like that. Other than that, this is a great uh, introduction. Uh, so the same thing, uh, once we get back, uh, dinner and various nightlife options for those who want to just enjoy dinner there or go at a resort or enjoy dinner out, uh, those are options. And then for those who want to socialize in the nighttime, whether it's Saturday or Sunday or whenever, uh, I'm open to this, you know, taking it to somewhere social where we can just socialize and enjoy nice uh, basic nightlife. This is not hardcore partying or anything where you're out for hours and, you know, you're getting wasted or things like that. It's just a simple little feel energy just to go out and, you know, get a feel of how things look and, you know, and just observe certain things. Uh, it's all part of the experience. And it's also, if you don't, if you choose not to do those things, always all good, no problem. All right, as we close out, uh, the Monday is going to be the final day in Arusha. Uh, so uh, we have some optional activities, a um, nice walking tour for those who want to enjoy the walking tour. Uh, but for the most part, uh, what we have is a Tanzanite experience. It's, it's the Tanzania Precious Gem. It's a great presentation. Uh, so that's uh, close by the hotel. And also, uh, we have a nice uh, shopping area called the Village, village uh, excuse me, called the Cultural Heritage Center. Uh, so we're going to be visiting that. It's this incredible building with some incredible this artwork. And, uh, you know, while we're there, we just break for lunch uh, there so you can just enjoy more of the experience. Uh, so originally what we want to do is a walk-in tour, uh, which we can uh, still do. Uh, but um, since we just added those two parts in um, to, you know, to the schedule, uh, we'll, you know, we'll still work it out the way you can walk uh, some. Um, and, you know, so... This is a part of the itinerary I've made some adjustments with, um, but the walking tour one year was perfect how we worked it out. Uh, but since then, the Tanzanite experience and this cultural heritage center have uh, been something to wear. Um, the great feedback on. Uh, and then in general, uh, we're putting you somewhere in a nice uh, resort where you can just enjoy a walking uh, walk area. Uh, so definitely work it out. So enjoy that final day. And then we just enjoy some beautiful final dining right there in Arusha. And then uh, get ready for this uh, early wake up call in the morning. That way we can uh, make our way to Arusha Airport uh, before we were going to Kilimanjaro. But the flight leaves so much earlier than Kilimanjaro is another hour away. The Arusha Airport is close by and Precision Air, which is uh, Tanzania's second uh, carrier, operates there. Uh, so that is a nice one hour flight to Zanzibar Island. And once we get there, we have a, you know, our bus will be there waiting for us. Uh, along with our Zanzibar crew, and we just get everything packed up and cruise to the northern part of the island to Kenwar, 
Kenwar was that first beach area that we went to in Tanzania. The, and we had that uh, full moon party and everything. It was just incredible. But since then, we went to Nungu, which is further north. Uh, but uh, we're back at Kenwa, and we're right there by that same resort to where the, you have that big beach. And, you know, you just feel like it's somewhere in tropical Jamaica or somewhere in this tropical paradise like Turks and Caicos. Uh, just a you know, tro you know, typical tropical Caribbean island. But now you are there on the Indian Ocean and the water is calm, beautiful and you know, perfect for snorkeling. And it's just a whole lot of beach activities. So for this day, not much going on. The best thing I'll tell everybody is just to kick back, enjoy themselves. And then the only thing that we have scheduled on that day uh, is uh, dinner. So uh, more than likely, we just meet up at the uh, the restaurant at the resort or one of the uh, other restaurants right by the resort. And then just enjoy a great dining and just you know, enjoy a social night. Uh, the next day is our full uh, tour day of Stone Town. So another wake, early wake up call. And then we have a one hour drive uh, to Stone Town and we're going to visit um, a whole lot of historical places. And this is actually a nice uh, walking tour as we walk through the you know, neighborhoods uh, in, in Stone Town. And you'll see all these small narrow streets and you'll see this, you know, the, the beach itself. And you just see this, you know, this beauty, uh, this, you know, you know this, this a beautiful coast. Uh, so I want to make sure that uh, we have a good experience. So my goal is not to keep us too long uh, there at the African Holocaust uh, site. Um, and also just make our way to uh, do a walk in and get to the Palace of Wonders, um, uh, which is not open, unfortunately, it uh, collapsed uh, a few years back and it's been in rebuild mode, but um, we have a nice presentation there. And then, you know, you're right there by the waterfront. Uh, this is a you know, great experience. And then we have an incredible uh, lunch option at six degrees south. And for those who enjoy grilled lobster, that's my son's favorite. He, if you see a video or a picture with him in grilled lobster, that's where he's at. Uh, so that's one of the things. Uh, yeah, you have great options uh, for you know for lunch if someone wants some unique things on the um, you know the menu. Uh, as far as seafood, uh, this is it right there, uh, Zanzibar for the whole time. All right, so uh, our third day in Zanzibar, this is just beach beach activity. So the only thing that we have scheduled is a uh, 4 p.m. sunset cruise. Other than that, uh, you just get up and enjoy your, you know, enjoy your day. Um, if you want lunch, you order lunch. If you want to do whatever, do whatever. Uh, enjoy kickback. Uh, this is just a full day of paradise. Sunset cruise is uh, about three hours or about two and a half hours. So we just were coasting along the, the beach areas and this, you're going to see just the whole incredible coast. Uh, so that's a nice uh, jamming uh, boat ride, uh, music, uh, drumming, and this nice uh, culture energy. So I have uh, lots of videos of uh, that experience and just always looking forward to it. It's always good to get in a boat, get out and just enjoy the paradise. So that's what that day is set for. So, and you're right there on the beach. So if you like swimming, you know, you love the water. If you like snorkeling, get your snorkeling gear uh, organized and um, that'll be perfect uh, for you. And then the next day, uh, we set uh, day nine, uh, Friday, November uh, 24th. Uh, we check out and then we just do a one hour ride. Uh, to Stone Town, and uh, I have VIP uh, seats, uh, uh, tickets uh, set for us. So we're in the top part of the deck of the boat, and it's a nice ferry boat. And then you're looking at about anywhere for about uh, about an hour and forty five minutes uh, ride. Um, so anywhere from one and a half hours to two hours, uh, based on the, the the flow. And so you just you know enjoy relaxing there, enjoy the view because it's a beautiful view, uh, leaving from the island of uh, Zanzibar directly to the mainland Dar es Salaam and as soon as you pull up into Dar es Salaam all you see is just these tall huge buildings and you just see this big city and it's one of the it's one of Africa's uh, mega cities so that's also part of the uh, you know, the experience is taking you to different aspects of uh, Tanzania that's what I love about Tanzania you have those three incredible parts of Tanzania and, you know we, there's so much more we can do in Tanzania but you know we're limited to the nine ten day schedule uh, so we just you know, show you the best but it's uh it's an incredible country more than, um, um, you know, we know and just uh, happy that, uh, you know, we went there and just gave it a chance and kept this itinerary going. Uh, so once we uh, get to Dar es Salaam, we have another bus uh, waiting for us and um, you know, one of our same crews in the past and they'll just take us to a short ride uh, right there to our hotel and uh, we just get settled and uh, we work out some uh, nice uh, dinner options and I've arranged dinner. I usually arrange dinner um, 
with management uh, for those who want to just eat the buffet and then usually work something out to take us to a nice uh, Jamaican restaurant out and take you to a nice uh, Ethiopian restaurant. So those are some of the options we usually have out as we just try to, to push nice tropical black international cuisine and just give you this an incredible taste of the, uh, you know, of not only this specific country, but other countries and other people from other countries who come there and you know, bring the culture. So it's been nothing but great experience and just, you know, appreciate a group of folks who are rolling with us and looking to have another great experience uh, in Tanzania. All right, so day 10, uh, Saturday, that's the only uh, day that we have uh, tour schedule. So a uh, full day. Uh, so we have two museums. Uh, we have the Natural Museum, um, excuse me, the National Museum and then the Village Museum. Uh, so these are two incredible museums. Um, goal is to do one in the morning and then one in the afternoon. Um, and then we have an art and frame uh, a gallery and then one or two uh, uh, sites as we you know, we're, we're still doing a city tour. So we're taking you around the actual city itself. All right, and the uh, final uh, day, uh, day 11, Sunday, November 26. Uh, so we, uh, some of us have different flight situations, but all of us are leaving directly from Dar es Salaam uh, directly to Nairobi, Kenya. Some of us will continue on to Amsterdam, and some of us will leave from uh, Nairobi directly to JFK. Uh, so that's a sequence of the flights that has worked out based on uh, everyone's preference and what everyone agree with. Uh, so that's uh, the flow that we have. So the goal uh, from there on is just to make sure that uh, we have an early dinner and then get you to the airport a few hours ahead of time uh, so you can be in sequence for your departure flight. And then uh, that's it. The journey is closed out. And um, since we're in this final journey, I've always put this note on there. This itinerary may change slightly for logistics and operational efficiency. So beyond that, uh, we just keep these itinerary flowing and um, it's a sequence you have in your mind. Uh, from just going from one location to the next. And it's just based on many previous experiences that I've had beyond, you know, doing this Africa tour business that, uh, and, you know, you learn to this craft itinerary. But this is one of my favorite and best uh, itineraries, especially since I had to build it from scratch in desperation uh, during the uh, November, during the 2020 um, pandemic and just had to find a country. And so I spent many hours just reading, watching videos and doing the research uh, and it has worked out, it's just beautiful. So uh, I look to keep doing it, doing it. This is my uh, business partner, Eugene, there in Tanzania. Good brother, work for the Ministry of Tourism. I'm always trying to recruit somebody that works with Ministry of Tourism. I always feel 100% safe and better with them because Number one, they, are, they want to represent their country. And number two, they see it as, as an opportunity to build a business for themselves also and still you know, work their business, so, which I've always appreciated because uh, we all have to learn to multitask and you know, build a business that work where we're working at, but build a business for the future of our family and the future of our people. So that's why I love working with these uh, two brothers. That, you know, they're family-oriented where they, just, they want to expand the business to where, you know, Next thing you know, our generations are going to be working together. So I look at this as long-term relationships and uh, generational, you know, business where we can do things together. Uh, so that's my, you know, goal to, you know, um, energize and encourage uh, our young generations to this, uh, this continue this diplomatic connection in Africa. So let me uh, stop there. So that is our full. Tanzania itinerary. So I wonder if anybody have any questions, whether it's in reference to that Tanzania itinerary or any of the other itineraries, um, even though we just did a brief overview of the other countries. All right, uh, no one have any questions. Uh, so please stop me if anyone have any questions and I'll just continue to share a few more things. So my next uh, newest page is my TikTok page. And this is a page where it's going to be a little bit different from my YouTube. Lots of short videos and just um, show more of some of the things that uh, we do as far as nightlife, boating, beaches, and kind of mix it up. So you see a bunch of different uh, videos from us in the club, us just enjoying great dining, you know, four-wheel driving, canopy walk at the beaches. 
So this has been my work in progress for last year. And so not sure, uh, this is the big blue jet I talked about. This is us, uh, without even clicking on it, us getting off that KLM flight uh, one of those years. And I'm trying to remember which year it was. Let me see if I see some of the people that I remember. Oh yes, that's November, 2021. I was there at the pools in Zanzibar, Tanzania, uh, not Zanzibar, but uh, Arusha, enjoying our swimming. Uh, this is one of the full moon crews uh, that is uh, incredible. I just show all of us the incredible beach activity. And it's like, if you're watching, watching it on your, your big screen TV, just all the colors come together. Uh, tropical dancing. Even got my favorite red snapper right here. This is a nice big grill red snapper. And this is literally um, right there in Nungui Beach. And so looking to keep on building on that uh, energy and the, uh, the Facebook, do my best to just upload photos and videos to Facebook, uh, but there's so much hours in a day and got so much uh, videos and photos to upload, but uh, I'm looking to just keep on uploading some more of the previous journeys and you can just always see some of them there. And uh, the same thing with Instagram, just uh, putting uh, information up and sharing it. And uh, this is uh, the classic uh, newsletter. Uh, don't mod I don't modify much uh, on here, but I just usually just try to modify enough and just keep all the links and everything updated. So anyone that uh, want to share any information, these newsletters are always good to just get into a nice overview and just, you know, show, show some of the pictures and show all the documentation links and so on. Uh, especially this link right here. So all the conference calls that we do, it's um, recorded and it's put on the same link right here. So uh, you see the right number, it's 2013. So I wanna say probably before that, they've been uploading the, the conference call. So we do a lot of presentations and they go to the same link. And then another list of this, all of our journeys and the links more group photos and then youtube TikTok, instagram facebook links and then just a general flow of our topics that we usually talk about some of the things and some of the things uh may talk about on another call and more links and then just a showcase of every single last uh, group photo And then uh, more links. All right, so family, uh, so that is our, our presentation for tonight and definitely wanna open things up uh, for some dialogue, some questions. Anybody wanna chime in on anything, bring anything up? Uh, this is a perfect time before we close out and the next time anyone will see me is when we're all on that plane together in Tanzania, on the way to Tanzania. Peace, family. It's Motanya. Um, I'm, uh, Rhonda and I are joining joining you uh, on your journey to South Africa, and um, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, I And also, we wish you uh, a fantastic trip to... Uh, Tanzania. And thank you much. Um, yeah. And uh, uh what, what has been your most popular destination? Um uh, Ghana. Ghana. Okay. <laughs> I can see why. I went there two years in a row. Um and also are there any hotel changes for South Africa for our South African trip? Uh yes. Um we have uh two different uh Protea uh Marriott hotels. Uh so we may have to use the other one. So that's one of the things I have to update. And then if there's any flow of the um, movements, uh, which I'm trying to get our guys in South Africa, they're based out of Cape Town to, to, to look at that itinerary. I don't want to be satisfied with that itinerary that we did last year, to look at it and tell me if we need to move things around to where things are efficient. 
Uh, so anything that's going to be changing is just going to be for efficiency purpose. But as far as if we promise you three and four star hotels, that's uh, what we deliver, three and four star hotels. And uh, Tanzania had to make uh, one or two changes. All right. Uh, so, when, when, when do you expect to have uh, that confirmed? Um, I want to keep the ones that we have on there because um, I do have ones where we have reservations with, uh, but uh, if anything, uh, like a finalized schedule, typing it up, I want to have that ready for us by the end of the month, beginning of the month, and then do a conference call where we go through that same schedule. Okay. Thank you. And then as far as all of the sites, I can't see any site adjustments uh, other than maybe adding one or two sites or and things like that. But the core of what you see on there is what we're doing. It's just um, I usually have to give our crew a chance to make final adjustments, and then we type everything up fresh and new. Okay, gotcha. Absolutely. And then... It seems like somebody else want to have a question. But yeah, along with other questions as far as public destination, uh, it would be Tanzania. The goal was always to make uh, South Africa that uh, destination. That's what that's when we started going in November 2019. But man, like this is the only time I've literally been able to do another South Africa journey. And uh, I'm glad people came on, which uh, we could have got it started a whole lot earlier. But um it was good enough to wear. They didn't charge us five thousand dollars a ticket, so that's good. And uh, June, I'm sure you want to share something. Hmm. I'm sure you want to share something. Um, not really. You know, I, I just feel you know you know me, man. I'm always feel since I met you in 2019. I'm always been very blessed just to be able to travel with you anytime that you go. Um, I'm just feel like, you know, I'm kind of sorry. I found out about it so late in life, man, because I would have bounced off this continent a long time ago. Yes, absolutely. Trying to get word out as best as possible. And uh, as far yeah. as yourself going to Liberia, uh, my goal is to work on um, conference calls uh, soon. Um, I'm trying to make them more popular, but uh, but people have to also be willing to join. Uh, but yeah. to go through that and uh, trying to just make sure that uh, people are ready uh, for Liberia. Uh, yeah. So for all other journeys, uh, that's my goal is to just do a conference call early. And then as we close out, try to do one a month or three, four weeks before we leave. That way we can, and hopefully everybody who's traveling with us on a journey, we can just go through everything just as we just did with Tanzania, went through all of the tour information. And then now we're doing a back to back uh, since we're leaving. So uh, that's my goal for every one of us uh, for South Africa in the next uh, few journeys and uh, try to keep everything updated. But just looking to get uh, this journey over and then just try to get uh, things ready for next year. And hopefully we have more people ready and people don't change their minds because Sometimes people are asking me wild and weird questions about countries that are not even close to where we're going. Uh, but, you know, none of us can predict the future and everything. But since I've been in this business, it's been, whether it's Ebola, whether it's this country, whether it's this civil war, this thing and that, and you stare away and you just keep rolling. Uh, and, you know, so I'm telling people, it's like, you know, you think I'm brave enough to want to put my life in danger. So I'm telling everyone that, um, we're safe as best as uh, we can be, uh, but none of us can, you know, can predict if, you know, Russia and America can start sending crazy missiles at each other. You and can't predict the future here. I mean, you can't predict it here. And this has got to be one of the most violent countries in, in the world. So, you know, I mean, it sounds like those questions come from first timers who have never been to the continent before. But once they go that first time, they'll love it and they'll be trying to get back there as fast as they can. But I did want to ask you, is Dunbar still the contact in Liberia? As far as the uh, visa, only on visa and arrival. Yeah, I wasn't going to use him. I was just going to go send it straight to the embassy. Yeah, so the other person that I have, she lives here. She's a Liberian, and uh, men are working on the tours together. Uh, right. So she did offer uh, help with that one also. So, But I just have to get you a tour address, right? Oh, one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing that's missing is the address. 
All right, so um, I'll make a note to send her so she can text me her business address or operation address in Liberia, and we could just use her information. And I, will then, use, I will use her name and that address, and then take Dunbar off the visa. Take him. Well, I, I what I did was I printed a, a, a bl another blank application, so I'll use her instead of Dunbar. Then, right? Uh yes. If you're gonna do visas directly here, he's only there to do visa on arrival. And then once, um, and then we have another tour guy that can also assist with that. But that's um, he helped Kala get his. So we well, literally. It said contact information, two references. So I put you down as one, and then I'll put this other person down as the second one and take Dunbar off, because like you said, there's no address for him. Yes, and uh, address situation is on uh, is. Yeah, I never asked him for his address, uh, but um, if we're going to send it to the embassy here, we have to do that because in his situation, he's going to go directly to the embassy there in his country. And then as a, you know, as a person that works with Minister of Tourism, he can help you get your visa. And uh, yeah. it's simple. I'd rather just go ahead and pay the 160 and and I, I would feel safer and more secure that way. Yes, absolutely. So. I will uh, text her and I'll make a note to um, for her to give our, our full information, uh, name, number, email address, um, and whatever you need. So other than that, you had any issues filling out the visa? No, nah, just common sense. You know. What's she laughing at? Well, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not common sense for many people. Um, yeah. Some people... Some people literally just... Don't look at it as that simple. So, but the the good thing of it is, um, I get to the point where we can, you know, do the same thing with all other countries as far as visas. Just type something nice, simple, and easy, uh, yeah. just like our Tanzania and uh, Ghana, and then get that worked out. Uh, so, but um, what I was um uh, explaining to my um, uh, to Kala because he he used uh this visa company. But the thing of it is, you don't have to waste money to use a visa company because if you're supposed to do visas, you know, it's like all the visas you have is, I've done with you. I've never brought that up that you should go to a third party company. No. So I tell people, don't give people bad advice. Let's, uh, let's try to just do these things. So that's why I usually go ahead and just type these things up, even on all of the, the, the website links. You have the visa details. I have it for, ten, uh, for Liberia. It's just, I haven't physically done one of their visas yet. Uh, and a lot of times it just takes me just to stop, uh, type up the visa and then make a sample details off it and just look at all of the things that could be difficult and complicated on the visa process and make it simple and make it as uh, simple as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, you le you're leaving in December? Uh, December 24th. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, we, have, uh, we, have, we, have, we have we have time and. Uh, since that's all you need, I'll, I'll just uh, send you a copy of her details. Yeah, um, and and you're still always, uh, She always offered the help. Uh, when I told her that um, Ross Dunbar was doing it, I told her it's just only for visa and arrival. Uh, right. But I told her that people just need, you know, people need different options. And it's the same thing. I was going to Senegal and the Gambia, and Gambia, you need a visa. And one person called me a few days before we travel and said they, they were coming with us. And you know we have the space, so there's no need to turn a person down. So the best option I was able to find out is just to call our guide and say, uh, "Here's the person information. Can you just get us a visa?" And he just worked it out. Right. So these are the things that we figure out after a while. Other than that, um, it's just the things that people have to do just frustrate them, and they they're not going to want to travel because they don't have to. They can just go to Miami. You don't need a visa to go there, or go somewhere in the Caribbean where they may not have to have all these requirements. So trying to do and trying to find the best way to make these things work and appealing as things as possible and simple and easy. So that's the only thing um, I guess got to figure out the uh, Liberia visa and um, and hopefully it wasn't confusing or anything. No, it, no. Once I get her address, her information, I'm just going to send it, mail it out to New York. And hopefully they don't need too many passport photos or anything from me. There's a simple passport photo, uh, your passport itself. And then uh, one hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah, they asked for two photos. I don't know why, but 
Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in there. It doesn't make me any difference. All right, cool. I promise you I'll, I'll, I'll connect with you because I want to make sure your visa stuff work good. And I'll also connect you with her because she wants to help people do it. You know, sometimes you have people want to help you and you just, you know, and it'll just make them feel better that uh, they're working with you and they're providing help. But right. She, is right there. She's uh, she's right there in uh, DC area. Okay. The thing I was telling her is that I would have to mail her stuff to you, which may not be a bad idea because I'm thinking about even doing that for me and my son. Just mailing our package to her. Okay. Well, you let me know whichever way you think. But, but I know that you're trying to get yours done right now, and I, I you know I, I hate to be the person that delay anyone for visas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I wanted everything done well in advance. Uh, and everything paid off like I always do. So, well, you know, appreciate that you're ready and organized ahead of time. I'm ready to go. And uh, so, I have to go right now. The Jets are playing the Raiders. So, bye, everybody. <laughs> yeah, definitely understand. And as well, we talk about visa since we talk about uh, Liberia and uh, Tanzania. As far as South Africa, especially for those who are just listening to the recording, South Africa, unless you're staying for 90 days or more, you do not need a visa. So that is one of the beautiful things about going to uh, South Africa. And let me see. Uh... And Akubi, uh, you have anything to share with us before we close? All right, family, uh, no one else have any questions or anything? Um... No, I'll call you before Thursday. <laughs> All right, all good, no problem. And yeah. uh, for anyone else, uh, especially if you don't come to South Africa, my goal is to just uh, keep updating you. And uh, hopefully, everyone is uh, ready uh, for us. And uh, we're gonna go through uh, as much as we can go to ahead of time and get you all ready. Since um, we're dealing with a busy Christmas, uh, New Year's, want to make sure that we have all things in sequence. So the greatest thing that we have is we all have our flights, we have our seats. And uh, we can just make sure that uh, we have that comfort and then uh, we'll take care of everything on the ground and make sure. The good thing is all of us are traveling together. So airport pickup is always great. Um, so that's perfect for uh, South Africa. I don't think I always have it like that. So uh, that is uh, next thing. So um, Clyde and uh, Rhonda, definitely looking forward to updating you both and looking forward to all joining us. So definitely, um, if you have any questions, uh, want to reach out to me, uh, that's just anyone in general, they want to talk about anything, uh, please just reach out and let's uh, talk. And if anybody needs to post anything on the WhatsApp page and uh, share any details or anything, please uh, do so, especially if it's related to our travel and things like that. And um, I realize that we won't have much communication on WhatsApp until like usually a few weeks before we travel. But as, as far as now, it's still somewhere where you have information readily available. So family, uh, that is uh, the journey of a lifetime and we're closing. So definitely appreciate everyone joining us. Uh, greetings, uh, Joanne. Um, let me know if you have any questions before I close. I can't hear her. Uh, you're muted. No, I'm, I'm okay. I just hit my mind. Uh, yes, uh, what I went to is I went to the, the, the tour books that I sent and also I went to the day-to-day -day itinerary. So I wanted to just uh, at least just close that out and uh, get everybody set. And then uh, if any other information I need to read to, it will just be for the next set of groups that we have, which is South Africa and Liberia. Uh, but uh, beyond that, I'm hoping that everyone is ready for Tanzania. We have gone through a whole lot. And then hopefully for those who already traveled to other countries, uh, just uh be on standby and um, you know we can do our best to keep on trying to get more people from other countries to come on and we'll keep on talking about it. But the goal is to literally just set up private group calls for all the countries that we have and hopefully more people get on and uh, we can just go through things. But if nothing else, you can call me, but uh, just want to make sure that uh, we are available to go through information uh, for everyone. All right, so family, I uh, appreciate everyone and uh, look forward to seeing everyone for Tanzania very shortly and looking forward to seeing everyone for South Africa also very shortly after that. And uh, beyond that, everyone else, I'll look forward to seeing you soon and I'll be around so we can keep uh, the flow of things going. So no matter if I'm traveling or moving around, 
uh, please uh, make sure if you have any questions, you want to uh, dialogue with me uh, or, you, or just need any information, just uh, mm -hmm. send me a message on WhatsApp and no matter where I'm traveling, moving around, I just usually look at those messages on a regular basis and just try to provide at least a quick reply, especially for those who are traveling with us. That's mainly who I have on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> Kubi, you're on another phone? The same phone. Hmm? I'll see you two of your name. Oh, you just noticed that? Yes, I just noticed that. I thought it was somebody else. Uh, but nevertheless, oh, um, I hope you, hopefully you're clear and you're good and you like the digital version of the book and you're prepared and you're ready because I won't see you until we get to Amsterdam on um, Friday, November, you know, November 17th. Okay, we'll talk before then. No problem. <laughs> All right. All right, so everyone, appreciate you. Mm -hmm. All right. Looking forward to it, and thanks for everyone's support and energy and everyone's commitment. And uh, we're looking forward to this delivering another great journey of a lifetime. Okay, okay thank All you. Right. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.